Okay, here we go. The second edition to this series, The Truth About Blank. As you can see from the title, this is The Truth About the Montreal Screwjob. Um, so the first video I did in the series was The Truth About Scene, and I said you can give me, uh, recommend some superstars for me to talk about. You could also recommend, you know, other things rather than just particular superstars like this. This was requested by Daniel1929, I believe. He requested a while ago. I'm finally getting to it. So, yeah, the truth about the Montreal Screwjob, what I think about it. Now, the Montreal Screwjob, 1997. I know I'm fucking 16 years late with this shit. But, you know, it's as good a time as any to talk about the Montreal Screwjob. Um, yeah. So, before I get into my opinions about it, let me just go through the history of it. You know, for some, if there's any people out there you don't know. You know, the history behind this, I'm sure everybody does, though. Um, so, yeah, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels um, were the two top guys around in the company in 1997. <clears throat> they had rivalries backstage. You know, they came up in the business together. There was always a competition and always a heated rivalry between the two. And working it their way towards, towards Survivor Series 1997, it was at a boiling point where something had to give. Now... We will never know the actual circumstances because Brett has his side of the story, Sean has his side of the story, and Vince has his side of the story. We will never know what is 100% accurate. What we do know is that Brett was going to WCW after Survivor Series. And he was the WWF champion at the time going into Survivor Series. And apparently Brett did not want to drop the title to Shawn Michaels in, in Canada. Um... Uh, at Survivor Series during their match and I guess this pissed off Sean and Vince was worried about his belt because if you remember before this um, I forgot I think it was a Lunger Blaze or something uh, one of the Divas uh, from WWF who was the Divas uh, Women's Champion uh, jumped ship to WCW and did that famous segment where she threw the belt in the trash Vince didn't want to uh, have that happen with the WWF Championship so he was worried about that. Um, so yeah, a lot of questions, mysteries, what is going to happen. And you know, there's a lot of stories on this. I saw a documentary, The uh, the, the Greatest Rivalries, Sean versus Brett, Greatest Rivalries DVD, I think it was, where they both sit down and talk to JR about it. Still, you don't get to the bottom of it because Sean acts like he doesn't remember anything because he's a born-again Christian. Um, but yeah, um, you know... Uh, this was a huge uh, event, of course. The match happens. Uh, Sean gets uh, Brett in the sharpshooter. Earl Hebner rings the bell, runs out of the ring. Brett doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Um, he doesn't know who was in, uh, who is involved in it. Just knows Vince was spits in Vince's face, punches him in the eye backstage, tears the ring apart, and you know the rest is history. Now, as all of you know, uh, people who have been subbed to me for a while, have watched a lot of my videos, know that I'm a huge Shawn Michaels fan. Shawn Michaels is, you know, my number one top superstar of all time. Um, so, don't think that when I say that the Montreal Screwjob was necessary and it's a good thing that it happened, don't think that's just because I'm a Shawn Michaels fan and I'm glad that Shawn Michaels won. I'm going to talk about why the Montreal Screwjob was perfect for happening and needed to happen. Um, the Montreal Screwjob did so many things for WWF. First being, it created the Mr. McMahon dickhead, egomaniacal boss character that we got, that great television that we got with Austin versus McMahon. This made everybody in the wrestling community, all the fans hate Mr. McMahon. And this created the character, in my opinion. This led to, you know, that character that everybody hated. The villain of the whole business. The villain of the show. So just for that fact that, you know, created the Miss McMahon character. That's one reason why uh, you needed the Macho Screwjob. And I would never have it taken back. And also, this just led to great fucking storylines. Now... Uh, there was something with Vince Russo where um, uh, McMahon didn't want to talk about the Montreal Screwjob. He didn't want to put
put it into storylines and angles. And Vince Russo basically said to McMahon, are you fucking high? Do you not realize you are on a gold mine here? You have a story and all this stuff written for itself. You have attention for itself. It gave WWF so much attention. Now, unfortunately, Bret Hart does get the short end of the stick in this. He goes to WCW, and WCW just does not know how to utilize Bret Hart in the effective manner. Um, which is sad because Bret Hart was the hottest guy in the business coming off of this screw job. How do you fuck it up? But WCW did fuck it up. And, you know, this screw job really, you know, along with, of course, other factors like Austin, DX, but the screw job was an integral part to really getting the Attitude Era going. I mean, you got this controversial shock in television. It was what started this anything could happen on in WWE mentality, WWF Raw, anything could happen. You had to watch it. It was appointment to TV because at any time, shit could just fucking hit the fan, you know? So just the how fitting it was to the Attitude Era was a, it just a huge reason why uh, the Macho Screwjob is important. You know, yes, it was, you know, uh, the people involved could have gone about it better, but for what it did long term and short term and, you know, overall, it was crucial, needed, uh, necessary. Um, I mean, all eyes were on WWF at this point, and, you know, you know, they were just riding the fucking waves of all this. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, and like I said, I'm not defending this because, you know, Shawn Michaels, uh, you know, uh, got his way in it. You know, whatever. But, um, I mean, I don't think you could really say that this was something that you uh, should have been taken back and should have been done away with. Yes, it, you know, it did hurt Bret Hart's reputation, but... I mean, could you imagine, like, I mean, I can't imagine, like, the Attitude Era without this. I mean, we might have been missing on a lot of shit because this really opened up doors for them, you know? Um, like I said, with the Mr. McMahon character and just all that. Um, so, yeah. Um, I And I also got a question about, uh, in my Q&A, about would I want to restart the match? No! Uh, if you restart the match, you destroy everything that this does you know the fact that the match ended in the crazy way that it did Bret Hart went bad shit that made the WWF fucking boost over WCW in attention in you know curiosity excitement and what the fuck could happen on this show so no way I would restart this match um I would have it play out the exact same way um and you know I, I know both guys or regret, you know, to a certain degree what happened. But I think they realized that what happened was best for business. And anybody who um, isn't a Bret Hart mark or, you know, a Shawn Michaels hater or a Vince hater would realize that, you know, as fucked up as it was, yeah, it was pretty dick, a dick move. But this was best for business. And, you know, it just, it really just, uh, embodied the attitude era and just really represented it and you know got things got the ball rolling with stuff like DX and Stone Cold yeah that stuff was around already but this really really set it off and said you know what no holds barred the gloves are off we're doing whatever the fuck we want so yeah this isn't a long video but you know that's my thoughts and opinions on uh, the Montreal screw job it was you know a bittersweet thing bitter for you know, the way that it sent Bret Hart off, and of course he would have just years and years of bad luck, but you can't say that it was an all negative thing for what it represented, what it did for the company, and, you know, just the way that it embodied the Attitude Era, you know? I mean, I really can't imagine an Attitude Era without the Montreal Screwjob, you know, would Vince, you know, have balls to do other shit if this didn't happen you know you don't know so it's like the attitude era was so great you wouldn't want to rewrite history and see what if i'm perfectly fine with what happened and all the great tv that we got from this you know um but yeah there's my little video on that um yeah uh, i'm thinking about doing my next one about the rock the truth about the rock i've been getting a lot of requests for that 
The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Um, so yeah, let me know if you want to see the truth about The Rock. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the Montreal Screwjob. If you're for it, if you're against it, if you would take it back, if you restart it, if you would not let it happen. Let's get a discussion going about this incident. You know, this new, <laughs> this relevant incident that happened 16 years ago. Um, so yeah, I'm Jay Shady, the voice of reason. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.